Uh, we have some wonderful questions here. And a couple of them are about some negative emotions that come up while making. And I'd love to start with those because they do come up. Uh, Joelle Brooke says, do you have any advice or experience on how to process the loss or depressive feelings associated with leaving a project or a specific field of work you were a part of? They say, I recently stepped away from a job and a lifestyle I love to move back home and work in a traditional office setting. I know I won't be away from that field of a career forever, but the time away has been rougher than I ex was expecting. Yeah. Um, I experienced this in the 90s. Uh, I had been working in commercial special effects from 93 to 97. It's about four years. And I took a job in early 1997 as a director of R&D for a startup. Um, now, when I add that it was for a startup, what you should hear is that it wasn't just being director of R&D. You join a startup environment, everybody is wearing a ton of hats. And I mean, at one point, I spent three months doing illustrator work because we couldn't afford to pay our designer. So I was fixing the designer's designs by using Adobe Illustrator every day, which is a program I didn't know how to use and still don't know how to use. That was rough. Uh, it was rough going from model making every day to being management, and I didn't do it well. Uh, and it's because I wasn't built to just make phone calls and fill in calendars. And it took me a long, actually, so I learned a lot on that job, and I learned a lot about what I, what I do and don't want out of employment. So I would submit, given what you've just gone through, that you do have a unique opportunity here, having moved away from a career you loved into one that sounds like you don't necessarily love, but it is solving the problem right now. Um, this gives you a great control. It gives you a great control against which to look at that career um, with less rose-colored glasses even and really understand the parts about it that you do love and to take a look at maybe some of the things that didn't work. It's always, it's always really useful in life to have a contrast in order to compare things. Um, that being said, leaving a project, I mean, I'll tell you that I get a little bit, I get a little bit depressed every single time I finish a big build. Um, not so much the one day builds and by one day builds, I mean, you know, something I complete within a week, uh, three or four days. But when I do bigger, bigger swings like the spacesuit uh, that we did for G4 Network last summer or uh, the Samaritan build that I did over the summer of 2020, both of those were really deep dives. And I, I like both. Obviously, I like both because they both show up on the channel. I, I really, really dig the quick and the quick and dirty and the fast iterative nature of a lot of the work that I do on Tested. And I also need a regular helping of a deep dive to kind of go in and spend more time on a thing. Uh, the latest one I'm kind of obsessed with, and maybe it's going to end up being the next big build I do, is that endo hand we just covered from uh, Prop Store's recent auction. Uh, and it is a T1 endo hand. There's another question later in which I'll talk about that a little bit. But uh, I go towards these big builds with great anticipation, but I remind myself that every time I finish one, I'm going to feel really weird in that C once it's done. And that can last one or two weeks. And it's not like I get cranky and it's not like I feel like it, I drop off a cliff. It's more like it's just the natural ebb and flow of things. And I finish a thing and spending all that time in a deep build is really spending all this time in the specific space in my head, wrapping my head around the project and putting it in here piece by piece by piece. And I get a deep endorphin rush from that. That is a deeply pleasurable experience. And so once I have solved all the problems and finished the object to my satisfaction, there's definitely like a, huh. there's a settling. Uh, and it took, again, it took me a while to understand that that's what was actually happening. That there was a little bit of a postpartum uh, uh, depression 
seriously. I, and I don't mean to, tri I, I recognize that postpartum depression is a totally other thing. I'm using it as a, as a marker here, but n what I'm experiencing isn't remotely close to that. So I'm, I'm aware of that. Um, you know, that oscillation is really a good thing to also take note of. It took me a while at ILM to realize, um, to realize my imposter complex when it would show up, which would be about 70% of the way through every single build at Industrial Light and Magic. I thought someone was going to come up and tap me on the shoulder and tell me to go home because I clearly didn't know what I was doing. And it... Uh, I was there for about a year and a half before I realized that this was happening on every build. And thus, after that, once it showed up, I'd be like, right, this is part of the process. It doesn't, it's no, it's no fun. But one of the hard parts about having a brain <laughs> is that you can know how it works and it doesn't help. <laughs> you can know that you're going to have this like negative response to a thing. And even knowing that doesn't really assist you in getting out of that sooner. But it does help in terms of lowering the stakes. Because before I had that knowledge that after every big build, I would have a, a dip, I'd be in that dip and thinking, what is wrong? What is, and I'd be looking for something to be wrong. And that's a very natural response. I don't feel as good as I used to. What, is, what has changed in my life? Um, but that wasn't what was happening. It wasn't like something had changed. It was just this oscillation of the good and the bad. Um, Joel, I, I, I'm sorry that it has been rougher than you were expecting. Uh, I hope that you get back to the career that you love soon. Um, and in line with your question, uh, SP Productions says, recently I've gotten frustrated with a few projects I've been working on. While they haven't been major catastrophes, it's been enough to get under my skin and I've had to walk away. Do you have any suggestions? for how to emotionally handle project failures, roadblocks, disappointments that could deter you from finishing a build. And commensurate with that, Timber Hoy says, how do you keep going on a build when you really, how do you keep going on a build you really want after you realize you're not going to be pleased with the final result? That's a great questions, both of them, and they are in the same realm. So I'm gonna answer them together. and. Recently, I, uh, uh, recently, a while back, I replicated the Windsor crown, the St. Edward's crown, for, uh, uh, that is the coronation crown for Queen Elizabeth uh, and the, 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 the royal family. And I was most of the way through it before I realized this is not my final crown. And I pushed through and finished it, even though I knew it was an iteration and when I do that, and so I built it, we finished the video, and then a week later, I started right in on a second one and I filmed it. And I, I haven't done that on the channel before, but the place I go to when I have to finish something I know isn't gonna satisfy me is I go back to my professional skills. I go back to thinking and behaving as if I'm on the clock, which is a really great framework. Because when you are building something on the clock, when you're model making for a living and your supervisor comes in and tells you to do something you don't agree with or you think is a poor, a poor choice aesthetically or mechanically, it doesn't matter what you think. You're just going to have to build it the way your supervisor says. And being a professional means you don't take that personally. Um, within reason, I understand. Uh, so thinking like a pro is one of the ways that I push past some of that negativity. The other one is I know that even if the last bit of this build is going to be a grind because I'm not going to get the thing out of it I was hoping to get, I do know that my net appreciation will be higher if I pull this thing across the finish line than if I leave it just shy of the finish line. Um, and that's kind of that conversation I like to talk about between me and future me. When I clean my shop at the end of the day, I said this in my book, I am paying honor to future me because I know that tomorrow me, when 
he walks into the shop, he's going to see the clean shop and be like, yeah, let's get to work. This is good. And I may not feel like cleaning up and I may have to put on some, uh, uh, some really good music like Party in the USA or something like that to just get my energy up to sweep up. But seriously, uh, 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 finishing a project is also wrapping something up and bringing it across the finish line so it's done is definitely is is definitely a, a paying honor to future me. Uh, frankly, also when I was most of the way done with that first crown and thinking this isn't going to be the crown I want, it felt like a revelation to realize well I I, I could just do it again. Uh, that helped. That helped significantly. Uh, and now the old crown sits on top of my video game machine and it is like in pieces because I pulled stuff off of it. I, I gutted it and it wasn't very well made mechanically. So it's sort of sitting there like the island of lost toys. Um, and I also love having that artifact. I, I think that I'm going to display it at Silicon this year because I love displaying. I love showing the iterations to get to a thing. Um, whenever I visit makerspaces, my biggest complaint, often my only complaint, is that the walls are too clean and that I want to see more messed up 3D prints on the wall. I want to see more iterations of the, of the, uh, uh, the exercise that someone was attempting to solve. Um, so Timber Hoist, or yeah, Timber Hoist says, when I find I don't have the level of skill needed to get an end result I'm happy with, I have a really hard time not just, just abandoning the project altogether. Look, I'll be honest, I also abandon projects all the time. Um, and sometimes it's just like, yeah, you just feel like, oh, I don't want to keep on going and fixing my own mistakes. That's definitely a real thing. Um, I have, well, as Tom Sachs says, we are all dying with a to-do list. Uh, and I really try and go easy on myself. Uh, my tested team will tell you there's a lot of builds that I said I was going to do next week. And then somehow I never got to or because I got started and the thing wasn't the way I wanted it to be or I didn't feel the, the juice that I wanted to feel from the build. And I let it go. Um, you know, part of the practice of being a person is to practice going easy on yourself about that kind of thing. We definitely all leave projects by the wayside for all sorts of different reasons. Um, the thing is, you, the good and the bad travel together. There's no way to get one without the other. They exist in contrast. They only exist in relation to each other. That sometimes helps me. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects. Questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams and we have some members only videos, including the Adam real time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.